Tesla rotor slurry pumps are ideal for challenging oil and gas, petrochemical, and industrial process applications. These pumps might be considered to be bipolar because they exhibit excellent consistency and durability even in the most corrosive, abrasive, and erosive particulate slurry and sludges. But Tesla pumps also excel with their no shear conveyance of the most fragile crystals, shear sensitive chemicals, and polymer emulsions. Those high performance characteristics and demanding applications result in long life and greater reduced spare parts, operating and maintenance costs, and better product yield. Wow, that's some impressive technology that you have there. Tom, can you tell me if there is any application that encounter multiple challenges of combined corrosion, abrasion, and shear sensitivity? Well, actually some slurry processes, most notably catalysts are both abrasive and shear sensitive. So the Tesla pump offers double value in those types of applications. Oh, uh, Tom, can you tell me how that is achieved? Well, it might best be observed by this clear acrylic demonstrator where you can view the slurry of ordinary plastic beads that have traveled thousands of loops during demonstrations. Because the boundary layer of viscous drag guides the higher specific gravity towards the center of the stream, neither the plastic beads nor the acrylic rotor show any signs of abrasive wear. Tom, I have a question that we have often been asked by our customers. Is air entrainment or cavitation a challenge for these disc pumps? It's not a challenge in the sense that they can handle it. Air entrainment, when it comes into contact with impellers of a centrifugal pump or elastomeric stators of a progressive cavity pump or gear teeth of a gear pumps, results in non-lubricated areas of those impellers, stators, gear teeth, and that results in considerable wear. Tesla pumps suffer no such wear because of the protection afforded by the boundary layer of viscous drag, which keeps the entrainment of air right in the middle of the stream. Comparative photos compare the differences between centrifugal and Tesla pumps and the effect of aeration on them. So what about cavitation? Even with the formidable challenge of cavitation, that is the formation of vacuum cavities, which they form on the inlet of the pump and then they violently implode as they travel through the outlet. That results in no damage to the Tesla pumps. And that can be viewed on other comparative photos. Tom, my next question is something engineers have often asked me when they have had not much success with centrifugal pumps. So with these disc pumps, what is the net positive suction head for a Tesla pump? Well, the Tesla pump's net positive suction head requirement is very low. It's typically about half to a third of that of a conventional centrifugal pump in the same service. That's due to the smooth laminar flow generated by the Tesla design. That's pretty impressive. Uh, can these Tesla pumps be run dry as well? The disc pump design itself is capable of being operated indefinitely with zero process fluid. Now, you have to take into account the bearings and the seals because they're at risk if they're totally dependent upon the process fluid for lubrication and cooling and if there's no process fluid. However, with properly matched seal and bearing packages that ensure lubrication and cooling, you can operate the Tesla pump indefinitely 